kind that it will be so obvious. You see, he said the beast of the field will honor me. Jackals and ostriches, people that, you see, Gentiles, let's just put it that way. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just in case, because I'm noticing that it seems as if the network is going on and off, especially when I'm decreeing and declaring that the devil is a liar. See, after the meeting, you can go back and listen over. By then, it's already online and all the break is removed. You will hear the word of God. Every prophetic declaration over your life will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Let's go on. So you are supposed to, number five, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Because God is worthy of our praise. The miracles and the things that he's going to do in this new beginning will be awesome. Will be awesome. So please listen for his voice. Listen carefully. I will just be, oh, oh, oh. Let's go on. Uh, verse 22. Yet you have not called me. You know why I had to read verse 22? Because I could easily prophesy all these things. But you must be careful to understand that there are things you are supposed to do. Look at verse 22. Just to buttress what I said. Yet you have not called me, called on me in prayer and in worship, O Jacob. So Jacob was supposed to call him for the new beginning. So that's why I said, call on him. Call on him. Call on God. Look at Jacob. This is showing what Jacob did that made him not to experience what God had in, plan, uh, in store. God had already shown what he wanted to do. But now, see what Jacob was doing. I don't see any Jacob in my church. All of us at this point in time are Israel. We hear the voice of God and we're wrong, for it, wrong with it. But you have grown, you have, but you have, ah, ah, ah. You have grown weary of me. You have grown weary of me. In this season, it is not the time to give up. It's not the time to say, I tried it out in 2022 and it didn't work. Um, I'm just going to just uh, put my Christian life on uh, autopilot. No, sir. Don't be weary of God and his dealings. Rather, put extra effort. So let me say number six. Be intimate with God for your new beginning. Number six, be intimate with God for your new beginning. Be intimate with God for your new beginning. Because, see, Jacob here was weary of God. Instead of him to be intimate, running ever so closely. Yes, I tried this. It didn't work. I need to ask God, what did I do wrong? Because I know with God, all things are possible. And if I will believe, all things are possible to me. So I need to run closer to God to see the rhythms of grace uh, that is producing so that I can walk within that unforced rhythm of grace and produce the results that I desire. Ayande, look at verse 23. You have not brought me your sheep or goats for your burnt offerings so in the new beginning instruction seven bring offerings unto god in this case he actually specifically mentioned burnt offerings very soon i'll be giving you instructions as per burnt offering but let me say this and let me put a caveat there I did not pick this scripture by myself. I, God is my witness. In fact, when I picked the scripture, he just said a new beginning. I said, Lord, where? And he said, go into your Bible. And he said, okay, type into the wordsmith um, uh, this uh, statement. New, newness or something like that. And I typed and only two scriptures. Even the second scripture is what we are going to use. Only two scriptures, Isaiah 43, verse 19. I will do a new thing, was what came out. And in Isaiah 42, which is the scripture, we also read Isaiah 42, verse 9 and 16. Those were the two places where a new thing was being mentioned. So I didn't plan what is now happening, but I knew God had it in mind. See, God has better plans for us if we only listen to him. I listened to him today. 
That's why we're getting blessed. But we're also receiving instructions. Listen to him part-time. And he will take you to places you know not how to get there. See, I didn't know how to get there. But he has helped me right now to even get there. Look at this. He said, we are supposed to, in this new beginning, bring both offerings. Nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with offerings. Look at this statement. This statement is huge. God says, I have not burdened you with sacrifice. Meaning, I have not said, see, you are going to do this, do this, do this, for me to bless you. No, he has blessed us freely. That's why we bring our offerings with joy. He has blessed us. He didn't ask us that, okay, do this before I do this. No, he has already done everything he needs to do pertaining to our life and to our godliness. That's all. Now, we are responding to that love. We are responding to that care. We are responding to the provision by the actions of our faith. Hmm. So he says, you have not honored me with your sacrifice, no, but I have not burdened you with offerings, nor wearied you with demands for offerings of incense. I have not even demanded anything. See, uh, um, on a lighter note, uh, uh, a colleague of mine showed me an article, a, a, actually a news story of um, a, an event, a, a true life story of a pastor who um, preached on the crossover as he was crossing over that uh, everybody that wants to cross into 2022 with blessings must uh, drop 16,000 naira each. So everybody in church must drop 16,000 naira each or else the courses will come after you because there are courses leading in 2022. Um, let me just fast forward and tell you that um, I don't subscribe to what happened to him but the congregation beat him silly and he landed in the hospital. He woke up in the hospital, having um, they were administering drip and um, they were covering him with bandages. Why? That's not how God does these things. I don't subscribe to the violence that occurred, but I also definitely do not subscribe to you trying to twist and wind people just for your own good. No, the scriptures and God is supposed to be honored and that's just it we don't do we don't play games we don't do schemes we simply hear god and follow him and we all obey so here we see here he says you have not bought me sweet cane with money no have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifice but you have burdened me with your sins and you have worried me with your wickedness I only I am he who wipes out your transgression. Look at that. God is telling you that, see, I'm the one that does this. You have not given me anything. I've not even demanded anything from you. You should think about it and give me things. I brought you into a new year. I brought you into a new season. I brought you to the new. I brought you into a new beginning. That's enough for you to even worship me with your offering with yourself, with your tithe, with your energy, with all the things that you can worship me with. Because, quite sincerely, something crossover. Quite sincerely, that colleague of mine that we were talking, he said a guy that was just 30, 35 or 39 years old did Happy New Year in January 1st. By January 3rd, he was dead. He was just walking, fell down and died. That's not our portion. With long life, will it satisfy us and show us his salvation? But that is enough for us to even thank him. That he is willing to show us long life and show us his salvation. Let's go on. So he says, yeah, I'm the one, the only one that wipes out transgression. So for my own sake, not because of you. Because you didn't beg me to. I'm the one that did it. And I will not remember your sins. He's the one that is deciding, choosing not to remember your sins. Remind me of your merits with a thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position that you may be proved right. Obviously, we all know we will not be proved right. Your first father, Jacob, sinned. And your spokesmen, the priests and the prophets, your mediators, have transgressed against me. So who is going to defend you? So I will. Profane the officials of the sanctuary, and I will consign Jacob to destruction, and I will subject Israel to defamation and abuse. Notice that these are real. But in Christ Jesus, Christ has fulfilled the law. Now he expects you to walk 
within the prism of covenant practices and principles, give God something this new season. Let him speak to you what you are to give. Plan it, organize it, and sow the seed. Watch what miracles will occur. Watch what miracles will occur. Let me move on. I've given you seven instructions from Jehovah. Isaiah 42. These were the two scriptures that he gave me. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 42. We'll be reading from verse 9. Quite sincerely, um, on Sunday, if I finish the message on, that I started last week Sunday, I'm going to do an expose on Isaiah 42. So you can read it ahead. But God has plenty of things to say from Isaiah 42. I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But I'm just taking excerpts today. Verse 9. Hallelujah. Uh, okay. Indeed, the former things have come to pass. Now I declare new things. Remember, we said remember not the former things. So he's saying indeed the former things have come to pass. It has happened. Can we move on now? Then now says, now I declare new things. See, 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 see. Forget the past. Something new is happening. Something new is happening. Now I declare the new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. So those were the things that God spoke to me through spoke to me to tell you he has proclaimed things ahead see the prophecies the potentials the prophecies have been spoken this is your year of recovery you will recover all this is your year of release you'll be released from every confinement every constraint every prison you'll be released this is your year of Goshen experience. You will experience Goshen is fullest dimensions. This is your year of all-round uh, victory. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. And this is your year of overwhelming uh, breakthroughs, the kind that you cannot hide. This is that year. So he has prophesied these things. He has declared new things before they spring forth. Look at verse 10. What's the next instruction? Number eight instruction. I hope you are writing down. Number eight instruction. He says, sing to the Lord a new song. In a new season, in a new beginning, sing to the Lord a new song. Don't stay with the old. Sing new songs. Don't stay with the old. Sing new songs. I mean it literally. See, see when God was talking to me, he said, I mean it literally and figuratively. Literally in that, give me some new praise. Concord some new praise. Download some new praises. Sing some new songs you've never sang before. Go listen to new songs that are praising me like you've never done it before. Learn some new songs because I need new songs emanating from your spirit, emanating from your soul. But he also said figuratively, meaning this thing is about you worshipping differently from how you have worshipped before. See, songs come from the fullness of your heart. Have you not noticed? When you're feeling very sad, it's hard to sing. Why? There is a short circuiting. There is an empty tank and you're trying to pull something from there. No, nothing is coming. But when you are joyful, notice that when something has happened, all of a sudden, without thinking, songs begin to pour out. Why? The overflow within now begins to bubble out and pour out. And you see somebody just standing and just, oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Ah, oh, it chases. You know it's from an overflow of something that is either being thought about or being experienced. He's saying, sing to the Lord a new song. That's number eight instruction. Sing his praises from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it. You islands and coastlands and those who inhabit them. Sing his praises. So from everywhere he's saying sing. In every circumstance, sing. In every situation, in every month, in every week, sing. Look at it here. Verse 11 says, let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voices. Whether wilderness or city, lift up your voice. The villages where Kida lives, 
let the inhabitants of Selah shout for joy. Let them shout joyfully from the tops of the mountains. So this is not a kind of singing that is just quiet, uh, me, myself, and I. No, 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 no. Sing unto the Lord. A new song. Let his praises reach the temple. Oh, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I bow down before him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's just it. Sing, sing, sing unto the Lord. Now notice what happens. Notice what happens. Notice carefully what happens. Verse 12. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praises in the islands and coastlands. Look at the effect. 13. The Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal like a man of war. He will shout. He will shout out, yes. He will raise a war cry. He will prevail mightily against his enemies. That correlates with Second Chronicles 2020. It correlates that as they began to sing, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Mount Seir, and Moab. Hmm, look at this. The Lord will go forth like a warrior, meaning he will fight your battles and you will hold your peace. He will shout out, yes, he will raise a war cry. Ah! And it will beat the enemy silly on your behalf. I declare over you every siege of the enemy, every plan, every machination, every array against you. I declare, may there be a response from heaven on your behalf in the name of Jesus. I am the Lebosha. Verse 14. I, the Lord, have been silent for a long time. I have been still and, and I have restrained myself. Now I will moan like a woman in labor. I will both gasp and pant. He said he had been quiet for a while. Maybe it's because the praises were not coming. Continue praising God throughout the year 2022 and see miracle after miracle, year after, month after month, week after week, days after days, Miracle one after another coming in waves, waves of glory, avalanches of miracles coming to you. Coming, why? There's a consistent praise going on, going on from your lips. Those eight instructions are crucial and key. They are very key. They are very key. They are very key. Can somebody who has written all the eight, please, can you post it, put it online, whether in the WhatsApp group or in the uh, speaker page so that people can see it. Those that missed out on one or two, they can write it down. These are the instructions that are needed right now. Please, somebody help me with that. He said, I've been silent. Verse 15, I will lay waste the mountains and the hills. See the effects of your praises. Verse 14, 